so hi students uh, welcome to the session so in this session uh, we'll be uh, seeing how to solve the tie set schedule problem and how to find the uh, tie set equilibrium equations and how to get your loop currents and as well as your branch currents so they're asking first thing for the network shown so draw the oriented graph that means they're asking us to draw the oriented graph and obtain the tie set equilibrium equations that means we need to get the kvl equations and also they're asking to find the branch currents so given twigs are so one five six when i tell twigs they are nothing but your tree branches okay so this is the graph you can see so there are a b c d nodes and so one to six branches and there is a current source connected in parallel with six branch right and the first thing, so you will be writing with respect to the any of the tie set problem. So will be your oriented graph. Oriented graph. So how do you get the oriented graph? So mention all the nodes. Mention all the nodes and replace your components with the lines, linear lines. That is with respect to the graph, right? And if there is a voltage source, replace the uh, branch with a short circuit. And if there is a current source, replace with a short circuit. So between A, B, C, and we have D nodes. So between A to D, there is a branch one, and the orientation is towards D. That is your branch one. And node branch two is connected between so A to B, and the orientation is towards A. So that is your branch two. And branch three is connected between B to C, and the orientation is towards towards D, and branch four is connected between A to C. So this is your branch four, and the orientation is towards A, and branch five is connected between node B to node D, and the orientation is towards D. And the last branch, branch six, that is connected to D and C nodes, and the orientation is towards D. And there is a current source, we'll give it as an open circuit. So hence, we'll not consider this while writing the oriented graph, right? So this is the oriented graph. So once we get the oriented graph, what is the next thing we'll write? So we'll be writing the tree graph, right? So the second one is tree graph. Tree graph. So whenever you are writing the tree graphs, right? So it will be having n minus one twigs. It will be having n minus one twigs. So where n represent the number of nodes, you have four nodes. So n minus one twigs. It will have maximum three twigs. So the already they have given the twigs to be what? So twigs are one comma five comma six. So now write the tree graph. So whenever you are writing the tree graph. So all the nodes should be considered as it is. So they should be considered. So between A, B, C, and D. So after that, your branch one should be considered, which is oriented towards D. Then branch five, that is a twig. Again, it is oriented towards D. And branch six, it is also oriented towards D. So this is your tree graph. So in this, so your twigs so what are the twigs here one comma five comma six so once you know the twigs so whatever the branches that are not considered to write your tree graph the other branches we call them as links right so what are the links now two comma three comma four so your twigs are one five six and the links are two three and four right so now you got your tree graphs based on your twigs so once you have tree graphs, next thing is we need to write the tie set schedule, right? So how to get your tie set schedule? Your tie set schedule is obtained by connecting one link at a time, right? So you will be getting your tie set schedule that I'll go to the uh, next slide because we'll be able to write me next slide. So next we'll be writing the tie set schedule. Next we'll be writing tie set schedule so when we write the tie set schedule so it will be having b minus it will be having b minus n minus one tie sets it will be having b minus n minus one tie set that is six minus four 
minus one. So that is equal to how many we have? So we'll get three different tie sets, right? So first tie set I'll take, that is your tie set one. So in this tie set, that means whichever the links, right? So what are the links we have here? So the links, links are two comma three comma four. So whichever you want to consider. So for tie set one, I'll consider the fourth branch. I'll consider the fourth branch. Now first write your tree graph. First, write your tree graph. So A, B, C, and D. So what is your tree graph with branch one? That is your branch five and branch six. And the orientation is downward, you know that. Right. And now you need to consider fourth branch and fourth branch is a link. So hence we'll take your fourth branch link with a dotted line to have a discrimination between the branches, twigs and links. So now I have taken and the orientation of this is towards A and the orientation of fourth branch is towards A. So that is your twig. So once we get the twig, so now we'll mention, so it will form a closed loop. Once we connect a link with the tree, it will form a closed loop. So what are the closed loop branches? One, six, and four. Five is an open loop branch. It is not connected. And now once you have a loop, we need to mention the loop currents. How do you mention the loop currents? The loop current direction should be the same that of your link branch direction, right? So the loop current here, I'll take it as I1. And this current direction should be that of your link direction. You can see the link direction is in this direction. So hence, I'll take the direction of your link or the loop to be in the anti-clockwise direction. That is for I1. That is your tie set one. So once you get your tie set one, so next we'll go for tie set two. So in this tie set two, I'll consider the third branch. I consider the third branch. So whichever branch you want to consider, nothing like mandatory, like you need to consider the same way. You can consider any way, you'll get the same answers, right? So A, B, and C, and your node D. A, that is your branch one, branch five, and branch six, right? So A, B, and C, and this is your D. Orientation is towards D, all the three branches. So this is one, two, this is sorry, this is five and this is six. So now I'm considering the third branch. Your third branch is connected between B and C. It is connected between B and C and the orientation is towards B. So this is your third branch. Now, once you have your branch, so what is the next thing we need to do? So we need to indicate the loop current. So now this is your closed loop and the loop current should be in the direction of the link so hence i'll take this in the anti-clockwise direction which is same as your link direction and the current loop current i take it as i2 so this is with respect to tie set 2 so next so what is the next thing now i need to go for tie set 3 so that is tie set 3 so now what is the branch you'll consider so you will consider your second branch that is your second link right so now again, you write the tree graph. Again, you write the tree graph. Connect the tree graph with the nodes. So this is A, B, and C. And this is your tree. And now you're connecting branch two, so which is connected between A and B. And the orientation is towards A. And the orientation is towards A. And this is your branch. What is this branch? So this is your branch two, and this is your branch one. This is five, and this is six. And now once you have your uh, tree set, tie set three, so now you need to mention the orientation of the loop current. So this current will take it as I3, and the again, the loop current I'll take in an anti-clockwise because it should be same of that of your link direction. So branch two is the link, so it should be in the same direction. So now you got your tie set schedule, Y1, I2, and I3. So once you're 
get with the tie set schedule next thing is we need to write the tie set matrix so when you are writing the tie set matrix we need to consider the loop current and the branch current directions right so next one is your tie set matrix so next one that is tie set tie set matrix so tie set matrix is given as b and the order of the tie set matrix is the number of tie set schedules into number of branches so how many tie set schedules you have got three tie set schedules so what are the tie set schedules that is there is a loop currents right you have i1 i2 and i3 and so i'll give some space to mention what are the branches associated to that followed by number of branches so it is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so we have total six branches and three tie set schedules right so now which is the what are the branches that are associated with uh, tie set 1 tie set 2 and tie set 3 just for your understanding so no need to mention that you can directly write for your understanding purpose we are mentioning what are the uh, tie set uh, branches for i1 what are the branches associated in that loop So one, six, and four is associated in the loop, but four is not connected in the loop. It is open, right? So hence, I'll take it as one, comma, four, comma, six, and for the second loop, so for I two, what are the branches associated? Three, five, one, six. That is three, comma, five, comma, six. And for the third loop, so what are the branches associated? So one, two, and five, six is not so not associated. That is one, comma, two, comma. fine now when you filling the data with respect to uh, this matrix so if a branch is not associated to the loop that particular branch should be filled with zeros so whenever you are filling the data if a particular branch is not associated with that loop it should be filled with zero so 1 4 6 are associated that means 2 3 and 5 is not associated here similarly so in the second loop 3 5 6 are associated that means so 1 Two and four is not associated. Similarly, in the third loop, one, two, five are there. So one is associated, two is associated. That means three, four, and six is not associated. Now, so once you fill the data for which are branches which are not associated. So now let us fill the data with respect to branches associated. Now your branch one is associated in the loop, and you need to check with the branch direction and the loop direction. You can see. Branch one direction and the loop direction are in the same direction, so hence you will take it as a plus one. And branch four is a link, right? So hence obviously the direction will be a positive. Then branch six and the current loop direction, right, is opposite, so we'll take it as a minus one. So it will be one zero zero one zero minus one. Similarly, coming for the second loop, you can check it out. Earlier you can write. So third branch is a link, so hence obviously it will be a positive. then fifth branch it is in the same direction so it is a positive and we need to see the sixth one it is in the opposite direction so hence we'll take it as minus 1 i3 if you see branch 1 is in the same direction of loop current second branch is a link and it will be in the same direction and the branch number 5 it will come in the opposite direction of the loop current i3 so hence it will be minus 1 so this is your tie set matrix which is of the order 3 cross 6 so which you got from the tie set schedule so once you get a tie set matrix next you need to find the impedance matrix branch impedance matrix so what is this branch impedance matrix so this particular branch impedance matrix gives the information about the impedances present in individual branch so the size of this particular branch impedance matrix is b cross b so when i tell b cross b number of branches into number of branches so now we have total six branches so it will have all the six branches associated so 1 2 3 so 4 5 and 6 similarly here also we will be having 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so that is the order of the matrix what is will be the order of the matrix now so here it will be 6 cross 6 right so now whenever you are filling the zb matrix branch impedance matrix the data should be filled only diagonally all the 
other data will be zero. So to the branch one, so which is the impedance connected, you can just check into the circuit. So to branch one, it is a four ohm, to branch two, it is three, and branch three, it is five ohms, branch four, seven ohms, branch five, six ohms, and branch six, it is two ohms. So to fill the same data with respect to the, whatever the impedances you have got, right? So now to the branch one, it is, so four ohms, to the branch two, it is a three ohm, right? And branch three, it is a five ohm and branch four. So what is the branch four associated with seven ohms and branch five is associated with six ohms and branch six is associated with two ohms. Now, what about the other data? All the other data cells will be filled with zeros. All the other data cells will be filled with zeros. So this will be very simple to fill the data. So whatever the branch impedance you have, fill it in diagonal way. So all the other information or all the other combinations, you take them as zeros. So you will get your branch impedance matrix. So hope this is simple and clear with us, right? So once you fill the data, now you can see the data will come only diagonally with respect to the matrix, which is of the order six cross six. So once you get this particular uh, matrix, right? So what is the next thing you need to do? You next, we need to find the two more matrices. So that is, we'll see in the next slide. So that is with respect to voltage source matrix and the voltage source matrix size, the size of the voltage source matrix is of the order B cross one, where B is the number of branches. So now whenever we are filling the voltage source matrix, we need to see if any voltage source is connected in that particular branch, right? So if you see the circuit, whatever is given, you can see there is no voltage source connected in any of the branches. So hence, what will be the data here? Whatever the branch given, here you will be filling with all the zeros. So all the six branches are filled with zeros and hence your VS is equal to what? Zero. Then the next one is IS. Whenever you are filling for IS, Again, your IS is also of the order six cross, that is your B cross one. So when it will be number of branches are six, so hence you'll get again six. Now, if you see, whenever you're seeing the voltage source, you need to see if a resistor, if a voltage source is connected in series with that particular branch. But when you're seeing the current source, you need to see if a current source is connected in parallel with the branch. So you can see there is only one current source, which is in parallel with branch six. But if you see the direction here, direction across the resistor is C to D, but the current direction is towards D to C. So they're in opposite direction. Hence, we take it as a negative. So we will take it as a minus 10. Since there are no other current sources, the other branch currents will be taken as zero. So that is your IS, right? We got your IS, we got VS, we got ZB. Now we need to get the equilibrium equations. So the equilibrium equation, KBL equilibrium equation generally is given as, so what is the equation? So that is ZL into IL minus B into ZB into IS that is equal to minus B into VS. So we know IL, IL is your loop, that is your loop current matrix, B is the Tyset matrix, ZB is your impedance, branch impedance matrix, IS is the source current, source current, current source matrix, and VS is the voltage source matrix. But what is the unknown thing? ZL. So that's why we will first try to find ZL. So ZL is given as B into ZB into B transpose. So this is the formula we'll use to find your ZL. So you know how to find the transpose of the matrix, right? So rows will be converted to columns and columns will be converted to rows. So now we'll start try to substitute the values for this. So what is your B? So B is like, so one zero zero so one zero minus one then zero zero one zero one minus one then here you have one one zero zero minus one and zero this is your b matrix then what is your zb matrix it is of the order six cross six so here it is of the order three cross six and here it will be the order of six cross six matrix. So it has the elements like four, three, five, seven, six and two, right? So this is the order of the matrix you get with respect to six cross six. So all the other elements will be filled with what? Zeros, right? 
you know that so all the other elements will be filled with zeros so if you want you can just write it so it will be a little bit uh, time consuming but it will be better if you complete the matrix and you can go for the values So you got your ZB matrix. So then you, I'll keep your B transpose matrix as it is, or if you want, you can substitute because I'll multiply first two matrices, then I'll go with the third matrix. Now, whenever you get the sub multiplication factor of this matrix, right? So what is that I'll get here now? So I'll get like, so it'll be three cross six into six cross three. So whatever the matrix I get, it will be again of three cross six matrix. I'll get only three cross six matrix into B transpose, right? So now when I take, when I multiply the row with the columns, right? So only I'll get the first element here, right? So I'll get the first element. So four plus zero plus zero plus zero, everything will be zero. Then the next will be what? So again, the second element, we don't have anything there. So because the first, only first element is there. So obviously all the other terms will become zero now, right? So again, here it will be, the second term will be, zero and again the third term also will be zero now when you go for the first row with the first row with the fourth column you can see so at the fourth position there is a one and seven so hence you will get seven then again so you will get zero then at last you can see there is a minus one and two last element so hence because of that i'll get minus two so similarly multiply the matrix so for the second one you'll get zero zero five, zero, so six and minus two. You'll get six and minus two. And the last matrix, so it will be four, three, zero, zero, minus six and zero. So this is the matrix that you get, which is a B into ZP matrix. So if you multiply this B into ZB matrix, you'll get this is a resultant. This I need to multiply with the B transpose. So when I tell B transpose, rows will become columns and columns will become rows. So now I'll take the transpose of your B matrix. The first I'll get is 1, 0, 1. Then I'll get it is 0, 0, 1. I'll get is 0, 0, 1. Then 0, 1, 0. Next is 1, 0, 0. Then 0, 1, minus 1. Then at last, minus 1, minus 1, and 0. So now it is of the order 3 cross 2, and here also, I mean 3 cross 6, sorry. And here also it will be of the order 6 cross 3. So whatever the resultant you get, it will be of the 3 cross 3 matrix. So therefore, so whatever you get, ZL, therefore, your ZL. So ZL, what is that I'll get? I'll get a 3 cross 3 matrix. So what is that I'll get? So when I multiply this particular row with this column, first column, so 4 into 1 is 4 plus 0, 0, then 7 and 1 you have, right? So 4 plus 7 plus minus 2 into minus 1 plus 2. So 4 plus 7 plus 2, so I'll get 13. So that is my first element in the first ZL matrix. So 13. Then if you go for the first with the second one, right? So again, I'll get it as two, then four, then the first, second row with the next, this thing. So I'll get it as two. So five plus six plus two, that is again 13. So again, I'll get minus six, then four, minus six, and it is again four plus three plus six, that is again 13. So this is of the order three cross three. So that is your ZL. So once you get your ZL, so what is the next thing you will do? You'll go for your KVL equilibrium equations. So to substitute in your KVL equilibrium equation, and then we'll get the values for your equilibrium equations. So now we'll try to write the KVL equilibrium equations. KVL equilibrium K 
KVL equilibrium equation. So what is the equation for your KVL equilibrium equation? It's going to ZL into IL minus B into ZB into IS that is equal to minus B into VS. But we know that. So what is your VS? VS is zero. So therefore, so what is your ZL into IL? IL that is equal to what? B into ZB into IS. So I'm just shifted the negative term to the right side. So that will be ZL into IL that is equal to B into ZB into IS. So now you know ZL term. So what is your ZL matrix? This is your ZL matrix. I'll take the same matrix 13, 2, 4. So that is 13, 2, 1, 4. 13, 2, 4. And 2, 13, and minus 6, 4, minus 6, and 13. So that is your ZL matrix. And what is IL matrix? That is your loop current matrix, right? So what is the loop current matrix? That is I1, I2, and I3. Because we have three loops, so we'll get three loop currents. So that will be equal to that will be equal to. So I'll retain my B as it is. First, I'll multiply the other two. Then I'll multiply with the B matrix. So then you know ZB matrix. So what is your ZB matrix? It is a little bit big. That is 6 cross 6 matrix. Right? So 4, 3, 5, 7, 6, and 2. Right? So all the other data, you know, it will be filled with zeros. Right? You know that. So you can fill it and solve it with respect to the matrix. Then this will be multiplied by with what is the multiplication factor you will be doing. So we'll be doing with IS. So what is your IS matrix? It is a six cross one matrix, right? So only the last term will be minus 10. So all the other elements will be filled with what? Zeros, right? So once you get this, now multiply the each row element with column of the of your IS matrix. So when you start multiplying with respect to your IS matrix, so what will happen? So since all the terms are zero, so only the last term will get in, will be left out. So all the other terms will get big, all the other terms will become zero, right? They will be neglected by default. So that will happen there. So that means what is the resultant you get from that? So it will like all zero, 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 zero. And what is the size of that matrix, whatever you get? So the size of the matrix that you get right from there. So if you say here, so this I can give it as B into B into, so the resultant of this, so it'll be the resultant of this. So this is your six cross one. So it'll be the resultant of this matrix. Again, it will be a six cross one matrix, six cross one matrix. So first row with the first, again, zero, 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 and minus 20, because the last term is two in this matrix and here it is minus 10. So two into minus 10, I'll get minus 20. That is the resultant. Now I need to multiply it with B matrix, right? So before going to the next step, first I'll multiply the ZL into IL. So what is that I'll get here? So I'll get 13 times I1 plus two times I2 plus four times I3. That is one equation, first row with the first column. Then again, what is the second equation I get? So two times I1 plus 13 times I2 minus six times I3. And the last equation, so four times I1 and it is minus, right? Minus six times I2 plus 13 times I3. So you got that is ZL into IL. So that will be equal to, so what is your B matrix? That is your uh, tie set matrix. So it is of three cross three order. Right. So it is given as so one zero zero one zero minus one, then zero zero one zero one and minus one again one one zero zero minus one and zero. So this is the matrix you get of your B, and you need to multiply this with what zero 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 minus twenty. You need to multiply this with this matrix. It is of the order 3 cross 6. It is of the order 6 cross 1. So I will get the single matrix, which is of the order 6. That is a, which is of the order what? 6 cross or 3 cross 1. I will get of the order 3 cross 1, right? I will get of the order 3 cross 1, right? 
So if you multiply the first term, so what is that? I'll get only the last bit, minus 1 and minus 20. So it will be plus 20. Then again, the last bit is minus 1 and minus 20. Again, plus 20. And the last bit is 0. 0 into minus 20 is 0. So you got the equations. So what are the equations you get here? KVL equations. So KVL equilibrium equations. So what are the equations you get here? 3 times, uh, that is 13 times I1 plus 2 times I2 plus 4 times I3, that is equal to what? 20. Then 2 times I1 plus 13 times I2 minus 6 times I3, that is equal to 20. Then 4 times I1 minus 6 times I2 plus 13 times I3, that is equal to 0. So solving this, solving, so solving these equations, we get what? We get the loop currents. We get your loop currents. So what is that we'll get? I1, I2, and I3. So solving these equations, we get your I1 to be 1.21 ampere and I2 to be 1.5 ampere and I3 to be 0 0.32 ampere. I point. 0 0.0.32 amperes. So this is with respect to KVL equilibrium equation and the loop currents. So in your question, one thing is they asked to find the KVL equilibrium equation so that we got your loop currents. So one thing is done. So what is left out? Still, we need to find the branch current. So in the branch currents, right? So to find your branch currents, Find, find your branch currents. So we use the formula that is your IB. So IB is equal to B transpose into IL. So what is your B transpose? B, B matrix is 3 cross 6. So now it becomes 6 cross 1, right? So what is the resultant I'll get? Here I'll get 101. You have, uh, I think you have material, right? Sheet, you can just cross up with your sheet data there. So 001, then 010, then 100, 01 minus 1, then minus 1, minus 1, and 0. So this is the B transpose. Rows are got converted to your columns into, into. So what is IL matrix? That is nothing but I1. I2 and I3. So if you want, you can substitute directly here the values of I1 and I2, I3, or you can later you can do it. So this, and what is your IB matrix? So IB matrix, it is of the order 6 cross 1. It is of the order 6 cross 1 or B cross 1, where it defines the branch currents of the individual branches. So here I'll take small letters, that is I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, the last one, that is I6, right? So I1 is the branch current that is flowing in the branch one, similarly up to I6. Now if I multiply this factor, so what is that I'll get? So 101, so I1 and I3 I'll get here. So the resultant will be like, so I1 plus I3, second one will be only I3, third one will be I2, and fourth one will be I1. Then the fifth branch, it will be I2 minus I3. And the sixth branch will be minus I1 minus I2. So this is what you get with the multiplication factor of this, right? So here that will be equal to what? I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, and I6. So six branches. So now you need to find the branch currents, right? So therefore, therefore, so what is your I1 equal to? So I1 plus I3. So therefore, I1 is equal to I1 plus I3. So you know the values of I1. So I1 is you got around 1.21 ampere. So I2, you got it as 1.5 ampere. And I3, you got it as 0.32 ampere. Substitute it here. So I1 plus I3, if you do, 
So 1.21 uh, plus 0.32. So we'll get around 1.5 or whatever the value. So 3 ampere. Next, what is I2? I2 is same as I3. So that is equal to 0 0.32 ampere. Then I3. So what is your I3? I3 is same as I2. So that is 1.5 ampere. Then I4. So what is your I4? I4 is same as your I1. So that is 1.21 ampere. Then I5. So what is your I5? It is I2 minus I3. So your I2 is 1.51 minus point is. So you will almost lose the value. So it will be 1.18. So it will be 1.18 ampere. And the last one, I6. So I6 is minus I1 minus I2. So it will be a minus of 2.71 so many amperes. Right? So these are your branch currents that you obtained from the KVL equilibrium equations. So until here, the problem there was. So in some of the problems, in some of the problems, they may ask you to solve further and they may ask you to find the branch voltages. They may ask you to find the, so they may ask you to find your branch voltages. So how to find your branch voltages, if they ask in further, right? So the equation for the branch voltages is given as Vb is equal to Vs plus Zb into Ib, Ib minus Is. So, you know, Vs is 0 for this particular circuit. So, Vb is will be equal to what? So, Zb into Ib minus Zb into Is. You know Ib, that is your branch current equation. Already you know this. So, this is your Ib, right? So, Ib you can substitute. And you know Zb, that is your branch impedance matrix. And what is Is? Is is your current source matrix, right? Which is of 0, 0, 0, 0 and minus 10. So simplify, you get your branch currents. And again, the size of this will be again 6 cross 1. So that is big number of branches into one column, right? So that's how you're going to get your branch voltages, right? So hope people are clear with this, how to solve a tie set matrix and how to find your KVL equilibrium equation and the branch currents and the branch voltages. So I'll just uh, refresh fast. So first, Thing, write the oriented graph and if there is a voltage source, take it as short circuit. If there is a current source, make it open circuit. No need to consider that branch. Then tree graph. So in the question, they have mentioned that twigs to be 156. When I tell twigs, they are nothing but your tree branches. right? So consider only that and mention the tree graph. So other than the twigs, whatever the branches left out, that we call it as a links. Links here are 2, 3 and Four. So once it you get your tree graph, next thing we need to get the tie set matrix. To get your tie set matrix, first we'll write your tie set schedule. So when I tell how many tie set schedules we'll get, so it'll be B minus N minus one, where B is the number of branches, N is the number of nodes. So we'll get maximum three tie set schedules. And how do you draw your tie set schedule? So we'll connect one link at a time to the tree graph so that it will form a closed loop and we'll indicate the loop current in the same direction that of your link direction. So from that, we'll be filling your tie set matrix. If your loop current and branch current in the same direction, you will take one. If it is in the opposite direction, you will take minus one. If a branch is not associated, you will take it as zero. After getting your tie set matrix, next you will find your branch impedance matrix. That is your Zb. So you'll fill the data in the diagonal with respect to the matrix. And it will be of the order number of branches into number of branches. That is B cross B. So here it is six cross six. You can see all the data is filled only in the diagonal and all the other elements will be filled with zero. Next, we'll get the voltage source matrix and the current source matrix, which is of the order B cross one. That is number of branches into one column. So since no voltage sources in circuit, we'll get zeros. And only the current source here, when I'm seeing, they're connected in, you should worry about if a current source is connected in parallel with the branch. So since your current 10 ampere current source is connected in parallel with the six ohm branch and the direction of the currents are in the opposite direction, hence I have taken as minus 10. If the direction of both the branches are in the same direction, then I would have taken as plus 10, okay? Then to get your KVL equilibrium equation, first thing we need to find ZL. ZL is given as B into ZB into B transpose. So solve the matrix with the variables. So then you'll get your ZL. So once you get ZL, 
So now take the KVL equilibrium equation, substitute in the equation. So here, since no voltages, so Vs is zero. In some circuit, you will not have current sources. Then what will be that? Is will be zero, right? So substitute, and then you will get your KVL equilibrium equations. So solve it, you will get your loop currents, okay? So once you get the loop currents, right, then the main purpose is to find your branch currents. So equation is given as IB is equal to B transpose into IL. So IB will give the number of branches, right? So which is of B cross one, number of branches into one. So I1 to I6. So substitute and you will get the values of I1, I2, I3 up to I6. So that will give your branch currents, right? So if further in any of the question, if they ask you to find the branch voltages, you can use the formula VB is equal to VS plus ZB into IB minus I. Substitute, you will get your branch voltages. So again, it will be of the order number of branches into one column, right? So this is how you're going to solve the uh, tie set for any given circuit using your tie set method, right? So whether you have used your normal uh, mesh analysis, node analysis, or theorems, right? So the procedure may be a different, but you will get you will try you will try to get the same values even if you apply if you apply any other rules, right? So hope you people are clear with the concepts. Okay, so thank you.